Leaders of the world's richest economies meeting in Japan for the G7 summit have agreed to a new initiative to counter what they call economic coercion. They issued a statement alleging a growing use of coercive economic measures to interfere in the sovereign affairs of other states. It says G7 members will use early warning and rapid information sharing with members meeting regularly for consultations. On Friday, Britain said the initiative was aimed at China and Russia. China's foreign ministry urged the G7 to look to its own coercive behavior rather than making groundless accusations. Well, as the G7 summit continues, the African Union's Trade Commissioner, Albert Muchanga, is pushing for a future of genuine and mutually beneficial relationships with its trade partners. Muchanga says the continent will not accept that it should just continue to be a source of raw materials for the rest of the world. His sentiments come as the African Union's chair has been invited to the G7 summit in Japan. Muchanga say, sees the invitation as a recognition of the systemic influence of Africa on the global economy. Leaders of Western powers have been visiting a host of African countries in the run-up to the summit, seeking greater trade links with the continent. Well, for more on that story, we're now joined by Professor John Stremlaw, who is an international relations expert at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa. He joins us from Johannesburg this hour. Professor, thank you for joining us. The G7 leaders are currently meeting in Hiroshima, Japan. What is Africa's place in the ongoing G7 summit, if any? Well, it's an indirect role. It's an important role, and uh, you've alluded to that, uh, I think, earlier on, it's uh, uh, the G7 are a, an informal, not a treaty organization, as you know, but they still comprise 44 percent of the global economy, but it's down from 70 percent three decades ago. So it is a changing world, and I think that Africa can be a moderating force between the competitiveness that is evident uh, on the continent, and for the good of the continent, by the way, uh, between China and uh, and the West. And so, therefore, uh, to find formulas for win-win-win uh, is, is incumbent upon African and African agency. And so I'm very glad that the that the uh, spokesman had that, that, that to say in a positive sense. And Azali uh, Asumani uh, from Comoros is the current chairman, and he'll be there uh, attending. But uh, South Africa is not attending this year. Right, and Professor, how relevant then is Africa as a continent to the G7's agenda, and what benefits are there for the continent in strengthening ties with the group? Well, the, this, uh, this summit, as you know, is dealing uh, heavily with the Ukraine war, and uh, uh, President uh, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky from Ukraine uh, has arrived in Hiroshima and will be speaking uh, to the G7 leaders. Now, the fact that they had a grant, uh, a grain agreement extension of two months that was brokered by Turkey and uh, uh, involved the Ukraine and Russia, it, let's hope that that does bring alleviation of some of the hunger problems that your earlier segment uh, referred to, because uh, Africa needs that grain very badly. And also, Africa needs uh, investment very badly, and so that the Belt and Road Initiative is positive, as is the infrastructure investments that are being made by the G7. So, it is it is a it is a positive agenda, as a contrary to the to the uh, the terrible circumstances that you were recount recounting in the earlier segment. 